Hello, and I'm delighted to speak once again to Peter Jones, CEO of 19 Group. How are you doing, Peter? I'm really, really well, Dan. If I'm not going to lie, a little bit tired after the run of the last few weeks, but, but we're in good shape. We're gonna we're gonna be talking about that. I think was that we, convincing? Sorry, was that, was that convincing? I'm <laughs> yeah. in good shape. Sort of, sort of, okay. sort of. I think this makes you my most prolific guest. To be honest, I think you've now usurped Doug Emsley. So I don't know if I should be sending you a trophy or just like giving you a clap or, or whatever. But thank you for giving up your time once again. So recently, as last week, Nineteen Group announced they had acquired acquired, should I say, London, Hong Kong-based global trade show organiser Oliver Kinross. Before we get into the whys and wherefores, for those that aren't aware, can you just give us a sort of rundown as to who Oliver Kinross are and what they do, please? Yes, that's a really good question. And I'm not sure I was aware of Oliver Kinross until more recently, over the, the recent years. Dan, they're phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. They are organisers, a team of 34, a very diverse team. They're based all over the world. They've got offices in Hong Kong and they've got people based out in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne. They're, they're in Brazil. And 34 brilliant, diverse, talented people that put together uh, the build shows. So they've got Sydney Build, London Build, New York Build, and right literally about an hour ago, yeah. Chicago Build opened. Yeah. Alison Jackson's there. And it's uh, so the initial reports we've got, very busy. And they're great shows. So I guess their sector is infrastructure, yeah. construction, but it's more kind of infrastructure, you know, big city builds. And that's what they do. So four big trade shows. Thank you. And I believe I read somewhere that you described this deal, this acquisition as <laughs> transformational for 19 Group. If I'm correct, or if I'm not incorrect, yeah. <laughs> tell me. No, you're correct. If I am correct. Of course you're correct. I'm... Tell me why that you're is. You're Dan Astor TV. Thank you. Of course you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do. So it's uh, completely transformational yeah. for the group. It's the biggest acquisition we've ever done. But the most important thing is it takes us outside of the UK. So, so far, 19 groups formed in 2018 when Phoenix Equity Partners invested. And we've been building and acquiring mainly in the UK. But this is the first time we've gone overseas. Cool. Uh, so this takes 19 into three continents, gl globalizing the business which is a really big deal for us to, to get outside of the UK. As much as Alison Jackson would say, she loves driving up the N40 to the NEC. Yeah. We love the NEC and Olympia, but it's nice to see. She's right there at the moment in Chicago reporting back, and it's nice to see other parts of the world. Sure. So yep. it's transformational because obviously you've gone international. It may seem an obvious question, but why is that important in its, in its, in our, in its own right? <laughs> So 19 is on a very strong growth trajectory. Today, we are 150 brilliant people. We keep growing, Dan, and as we go into the next round of investment, so, you know, we're in private equity, sure. they're normally three to five years. We're in a fifth year now, which is unusually long, but because of COVID, it sure. uh, held us up. Uh, so next year, we'll likely, that 19 will exit to the next bigger uh, PE house. Yep. And I think the next, next natural expected trajectory will be to go international sure and also as much as i love the uk i'm quite patriotic there's some amazing shows in the uk yeah. our business model is major scale trade shows so the big trade shows um and and i'm not sure there's an abundance of targets right now to purchase in the uk sure well we're going to come and talk about that as well because you know i have lots of people on this show and most recently doug emsley has set up an investment vehicle there are lots, lots of other investment vehicles you know doug's my old boss everyone's everyone's old boss in this industry <laughs> everyone's worked with everybody so lots of people out there that are looking for i guess targets and to acquire businesses like oliver kimrock and others <laughs> Lots of private equity money, which has still stayed around post pandemic, mm -hmm. which is good to see. They didn't run through the hills. More so. Absolutely more so. I think people call it dry powder. Yeah. Explain the process. So, for someone that doesn't understand, you know, how this sort of deal comes around, it's obviously not by luck and chance. You know, sometimes you stumble across something, but I guess this has been, if not this particular one, but, you know, the acquisition strategy or even this particular one might have been <laughs> in the offing for a while. Just give us a a flavor of how these things pan out, please. Well, sometimes you go direct. So it's a bit like going into uh, a marina 
and there's some boats that have got the sail, you know, for sale sign on, and there's other boats that have the, they're not for sale. And quite often for an acquirer, you know, like 19, like the other known groups, you know, the Roars, the Arcs, Close to Stills, you kind of really like to get out there and just dig something out that's not for sale because quite often they're the sure. very interesting targets. Then also what happens, Dan, is sometimes once you find that target, you know, that couple sat on their beautiful sailing boat and you go and start talking to them, it sometimes it goes back to a broker and ends up getting into a process anyway. Yeah. Hang on one second. So right. every, 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 interview, every interview I've done with you. Every interview. <laughs> The lights go off. <laughs> just, I sat in a different part of the building, so I thought the lights don't go off. But that's why you've, that's why you've got the money to um, acquire businesses, Peter, because you're saving it on uh, electricity. So I like that. <laughs> exactly. So the Oliver Kinross deal yeah. was a hotly contested deal. So there were five bidders in there. So, you know, some big names that you'll be uh, familiar sure. with. And here's the thing, right, Dan. So when brilliant entrepreneurs like Neil McKenzie, Jay McKenzie, and their two shareholders, so Adam Adam and Barry, are looking at the prospects of selling their business. Sure. One always assumes that you're just going to sell the business to the highest bidder. Yeah. And let me tell you this, from a former entrepreneur, so I've launched, built, and sold four times, the highest price is not always the biggest driver, especially if those people are going to go on to continue to build that business you know, during an earnout. out and maybe beyond an earn out, then they really need to make sure it's going to the right home. And I'm not saying for a second, the other bidders we we're up against are not good sure. companies. They're great companies. Yeah. But when it comes to an exciting business like Oliver Kimross, that they've dug out the ground and building, sure. that's where 19 really comes into its own. Yeah. To get behind those founder owners, support them. We're, the, the word corporate here, Dan, is banned. No, nobody uses the word corporate. It's, it's totally banned. Like HR, HR at 19 is banned. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just focus on building amazing shows. Sure. And I think when we're in a hotly contested process, that will normally always stand sure. us in good stead. And Oliver Kinross had a bid that was many turns ahead of us in a multiple, you know, from a big American bidder, but we beat them anyway because often these deals are won on relationships and and trust sure how proud does that make you feel peter because you yeah, can't really, tell me really, who the other really companies proud. are but some people might have an idea <laughs> but you must be sitting there not smug but like proud that you the team have got yourself in this position that if what you're saying is true and i've got no doubt no reason not to believe you that it's not just about the money and people are picking you yeah. because of your the culture, the dynamic, the, the, the direction you're going in, yeah. it must make you feel really yeah. proud. It really does. The culture of 19 is amazing, Dan. And we ask any uh, target that we approach, you know, one of the first things we say is talk to all of the other acquisitions that we've done. You know, please come into 19 HQ and take a walk around and see our people. Come to our monthly 19 exchanges where we invite everyone in, you know, to hear the plan of the business. The culture here is really, really strong. And I would say it's probably our differentiating USP that hopefully makes us stand out, you know, above others. And again, if, you, if you're buying a business where they, they want to come in and build the business as part of the group, they've got to be really comfortable with the culture they're going into. And I think that's where, so far, we, we are coming up trumps. Fantastic. And I guess it has to work both ways. So it's like any sort of interview process, if you like. You, you, you also have to understand that they're going to integrate into the 19 culture. And talk to me about that, because... You know, it's one thing picking up a business and the accountants add the potential EBITDA to the bottom line and what it's going to do for future exits. But the team have to integrate, right? There's still 34 people in this instance that sort of come in. I don't know if they're coming into your office, if you're actually, because I know every every week I see that you're adding a floor to 19. So, you know, how, how does that work? How do you go about integrating the teams? Because they're not just numbers on spreadsheets. Well, a big shout out to Reese Greenberg, by the way, our group EA and now head of culture. So we have gone up into four floors of this building in Wimbledon, which is great cultures need good environments to thrive. And we've got an amazing environment here. So we're, we're very fortunate. In terms of integrating, look, we went into Oliver Kinross last week to meet their team of 34 yeah. great people. And they're genuinely, I could, we could feel, you know, the warmth and a lot of smiles in the room. But naturally, Dan, behind those smiles is anxiety. Sure. And we get that real here. Yeah. And people wonder, even though, you know, it 
sounds great. <laughs> but what does this really sure. mean, you know, to them? And our reassurance is what we don't say is don't worry, guys, nothing's changing. It's business as usual yeah. because that's bollocks yeah. and everyone yeah. will see through yeah. it. Uh, but equally, um, any changes that we make will be very slow and steady and sustainable. And we will make changes and help and support where we genuinely work as a team to feel it's going to improve the business. Our, our pledge to Oliver Kinross and to every acquisition we've done and to all of our future acquisitions is we will always stand behind you, not in front, not even alongside you, but get behind you. So we've got quite a big machine now here at 19, and we've got a fantastic infrastructure to support on finance, administration, operations, marketing support. And it's basically thrusting that all behind an organization. Leave those, Oliver Kinross, those 34 people. I mean, you've seen their shows. They're yeah. amazing. Yeah. Just keep doing that, guys. Yeah. And if there's anything we can bring behind you to help support, that's what we'll do. Sure. And just outside 19 Group, you know, we talk, there's, there seems to be a lot, there's acquisitions all the time at the moment, right? Lots of acquisitions going on. How exciting is that for you, you know, given what we've been through? That must sort of <clears> guess <throat> that the trade show exhibition industry specifically is in rude health, not just in the UK, but across the world. How, how excited are you as an individual to be leading an organization at this time? <laughs> Yeah, really excited. And the success of the other companies around us, you know, Reed Exhibitions were talking about how strong their shows have come back after the uh, pandemic. I was only c congratulating somebody at, at Clarion the other day and Easy Fairs Packaging Week at London. Some of these are our competitors, right? But so in a, a sense, I'm very proud of, which one am I going? This, yeah. 19. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is, yeah. <laughs> this is our D DNA. But more so, I'm just really, really proud of the sector. And Dan... People just need to be together. We operate better when we're together. We're humans. We're meant to be together. And two years of a pandemic proved just how important trade shows are. And to see the success of everyone's businesses, 19's not, you know, a single outlier. All of the shows are doing really, really well. It just proves the value of what we do, trade shows. And we've spent a long time in the sector, right? So it's nice to be yeah. validated. Yeah. And can finally, can we expect to see... Further announcements, anything you're working on that you might want to tell us a little bit about? Yeah, so we've got another acquisition going through at the moment in the cyber. I don't know if I'm going to say that. <laughs> cyber <laughs> world. Yeah. Um, which is a really, really good one. Yeah. So, so building out our uh, cyber shows. And then the next year, we'll likely see 19 uh, transition. So some call it an exit, but they're scary. But, you cool. know, going to the next bigger investors and we'll keep growing we've got a vision for the business we're really excited we all feel very confident we're chasing down that north star and we believe we can get there sure what does that mean for you peter you know like potential exit in a year's time which you've told us about how you know your personal journey has been a you know a, an interesting one a phenomenal one ups and downs <laughs> because of the <clears throat> pandemic yeah you know wh wh yeah. where do you sit in all this how how are you how do you see the future for peter jones uh it's it's been a real challenge so uh if you're asking me do i think i'm gonna get sacked <laughs> <laughs> oh, i didn't say that i mean if we sell to trade i'll probably get fired <laughs> by somebody quite willingly All right. um if we sell to private equity which is obviously the likely yeah. we're going to a bigger private equity house then i would love to continue to build this group i'm not i'm, I'm not going to lie to you dan and your audience this has been tough I'm a founder entrepreneur. I've launched and built, you know, four companies that have got to a total of about 12 people and then sell and there's, you know, four or five of you and build. And to go into an organization like this where you grow to today's 150, you know, we'll go on very quickly to 200, 400, yeah. Yeah. thousand people. It's a very different skill set. Sure. And I'm very lucky that we've got a leadership team here that are very patient. They work with me. They're, they're my mentor. I lean on them. They're very supportive. I've also got CEO coach David Gregson, who works very closely with me yeah. to, you know, work on my leadership skills. And it's it's a really tough challenge, Dan. But so far, I'm I'm holding in, and hopefully, I can do. I'd I'd like to at least do another round sure. with nineteen. Good you, to take us through round two. You heard it here first, Peter. You're always very giving <laughs> of your time. Thank you very much. Also, very candid and truthful and honest interview. So appreciate that. It's really great to see. I remember interviewing you during the pandemic 
uh, amongst others and I've got the privilege to have seen everyone sort of come out the other side and these conversations are definitely yeah. much more exciting yeah. than the ones I ha- we all had sort of two and a half, three. <laughs> so listen, uh, I, I, I wish you continued success personally and for the business and you know, hopefully next time you get another acquisition, which looks like it might be soon, maybe I'll have you on again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dan, thanks you for your support and thank you also for the industry support. That announcement that went out of Oliver Kinross got, you know, a huge amount of support. And from 19 Group, we're really, really grateful to a brilliant UK event sector. So thank you to everyone for supporting 19. Thank you.